the US is going to hit a brick wall uh, momentarily because the Saudis have just removed the yeah the petrodollar. Dollar. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly where I was going. Oh, okay. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Then, yeah. So that's going to fast, but then the UK is going to be in decline along with it because we're so closely tied to the dollar in a lot of instances. So we're all screwed basically at that point. That's all I wanted to, to add to it, really. Yeah. The entire Western world is because this is something that I look forward to um, to uh, you guys covering over at the Lotus Eaters. But yeah, the petrol dollar is no more. And for those that do not understand the significance of the petrol dollar, and most don't because they have never been taught the significance mm. of the petrol dollar, you have often heard that the dollar is the world's reserve currency. There's a reason for that, and that is the petrol dollar. And that is because way back when. Uh, an appointment or an agreement was made between the US and Saudi Arabia, which basically declared that all uh, oil trading, all buying and selling of oil had to be done in dollars and in dollars only. So if Russia or whoever wants to buy oil from, uh, from Saudi Arabia, well, that means that first they have to exchange their own currency for dollars, and then they can make whatever purchase they need. But they need to get those dollars first, which in turn means that there was a constant worldwide su supply for U.S. dollars. This is why the dollar has always been this really strong currency and why so many other nations have linked their own currency toward, uh, directly with the dollar. For instance, they have decided that or our currency is worth so and so many dollars, and that's what it's worth. Because that's what happens mm. when you end the fiat model. Uh, the problem then is that just a few days ago, uh, the, the Saudi Arabian authorities declined to renew this agreement, which uh, said that all uh, oil trading has to happen in dollars. Now, for the moment, they will accept any currency, meaning the Chinese, they can buy dollars in yen, the Russians can buy oil in rubles the europeans can buy oil in euros which means that none of them needs the dollar anymore well what does that mean mm -hmm. well that means that the us is no longer in a position where they can just print new dollars because there's a constant demand for it which means you can basically print your way out of all foreign debt or all state debt, basically. That is now at an end. Because part of the reason why, why the Biden administration has just given away so much money during the lockdowns was because they could just print new ones because of the petrodollar. That, incidentally, is why you have this massive, massive inflation. It's because there's more money in the market because they printed so unbelievably much of it. That's the cause for the inflation right there. But anyway... Now, when you no longer have the petrodollar, when you no longer have to have the rest of the world clamoring for dollars because they needed to buy oil, that means the demand for dollars goes down internationally. That means the US can no longer print money to pay their government debt. That means that money has to be taken from somewhere else or the US defaults. And that's going to be very, very ugly. And that is only mm. going to bring about the situation that you described, Bo, much, much faster. You you described it as if this is going to happen in a century. Without the petrodollar, it's going to happen in years. It's going to be in our lifetime. Sure. No, I wouldn't be surprised um, if it happens very quickly. It might even happen during Trump's next presidency. Now, that's another, what thing I'm is, another thing is... We live in <clears throat> me, a much, much more quickened age. Even than in the second half of the 20th century, we live in a quickened age. If you go back to the 1st and 2nd century BC, which is when the Roman Republic died, everything played out over decades and decades. Now things play out a lot, lot quicker. A um, couple of things, again, to build on Andre, making some bloody brilliant points, to build on a couple of things he said there, more economics, really, or political economy. A um, couple of big things to point out is this idea of a Bidenomics nonsense. Uh, in in America, your, your Treasury Secretary is uh, Janet Yellen. Uh, Janet the Felon Yellen. She is absolutely incompetent and, uh, as, if I had to put money on it, um, uh, not 
working in the interests of the United States. Uh, I would put it as, as, as starkly as that. Um, <clears throat> the United States um, national debt at the moment is, I think it's 33, 34 or 35 trillion dollars. Yeah. Okay. Now that and is it's growing. It's, it, and, it hasn't yeah, stopped. That's I think a it, really bad thing. Oh yeah. Oh, oh it's accelerating. No, it's accelerating. Yeah. Uh, now, if anyone might think, well, that's a that's a terribly big number, uh, but you know that's what national debts are like, and uh, they've got uh, forever to pay it back, right? Uh, yeah, those things are true, but still, the figure of uh, of the trillions in the thirties of trillions is completely divorced from reality. It's a complete nonsense number. Um, it, it's it's sort of a crazy thing. And a couple of things happened in the last six months or so. One, which happened just the other day, was that Saudi went off the petrodollar. That's absolutely giant. The fact that the whole world's media isn't jumping up and down and going mad about that. The fact that there's not some sort of political crisis at the Treasury and the White House about this and the Fed mm. mad. About six months ago, or maybe it was a bit more anyway, in that ballpark, um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the gr biggest financial ratings companies is companies like Finch, Fitch, and um, I can't remember some of the others, but they're, they're they're companies that rate whole countries and giant banks and giant companies, and they give them uh, if you're if you're at the very best, i.e., if you've got liquid money and you're good to borrow and lend, you get a AAA rating, right? Anything other than a AAA rating means that there's question marks over whether it, you might go bankrupt quite soon. <laughs> okay, mm. so the United States as an economy has always been AAA. Absolutely, of course, of course, no question. Well, it was downgraded by um, uh, Moody, Mo Pause and Moody, Moody and Pause. I can't remember. It is I, I was never really into sort of the knowing much about the ratings uh, ratings companies, uh, but they downgraded the United States from AAA. And uh, Janet Yellen was asked about this, and she said, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It is an absolutely gigantic deal. It absolutely is, um, as is this uh, petrodollar thing. Um, <clears throat> it's the first cracks, real sort of undeniable cracks, in um, in the beer moth, the unassailable beer moth that was the economy of the United States. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no. It's 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 now built on a house of cards, or the foundations of it, i.e., their national debt, um, is is crumbling sand now. Mm -hmm. and, and people may know if you pay any attention to the news um, that every now and again, every six months or so, or every year or so, it comes up in Congress, and it's a big part of American politics. They have to keep uh, increasing the so-called debt ceiling. That is the amount that, that even the Fed would allow the, the the Federal Reserve would allow the federal government to keep borrowing or to keep printing. Um, and they the government have to keep raising this quote unquote ceiling in order to not default, as, as Andre says. Can we take um, a moment just to explain what that yeah, is? If sure, we put sure. it, if we put that into the perspective of you as an individual, what the U.S. Senate re constantly raising the, uh, the the debt ceiling means? That's the equivalent of you having a credit card and you have maxed it out. It's a big freaking problem. But rather than reducing how much you are overdue on your credit card, you just increase the the amount which you can overdraft it so it's basically yeah. just increasing your overdraft capacity more and more and more sorry not your overdraft capacity but basically how much you are allowed to overdraft so that your 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 deficit on your credit card becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and you just push off the the, the day that the bill is due okay fine i am now thousands of pounds or dollars overdue is fine i'll just lift it another 500 and worry about when the bill comes later but eventually that bill is going to come and that's kind of like what they're doing and well you raised a very interesting point here like i shared jimmy Dore uh, talking about this on x in frustration like i generally don't do politics but just in frustration like why is no one talking about this because this, for all of us 
in the Western world, what just happened? And I saw someone ask about it. When did this happen? Uh, days ago, like th this week. What just happened was the financial equivalent of 9-11 times 100. This is worse mm. than the finance crisis. This is worse than the lockdowns. This is worse than anything. This is the single largest economic shock of our lifetimes. Mm. And no one is talking about it. And that's because it's not going to be felt for some time. Now, gentlemen, I'm, I have some my own thoughts on why this isn't being covered by any of the financial trades that should be in complete panic mode over this. Why yeah. aren't they talking about it? What do you think? Mm. Mm. Well, well, because they're a cabal that, uh, that mm. are currently making money out of the status quo. And when, when not if, when the whole house of cards collapses uh that they'll be they'll be out of pocket or rather their cash cow will have died so all mm. they want to do is keep it going keep milking it for as long as they possibly can even if that's only a few months or a few years uh that's what it is it's about okay. yeah you're absolutely right andre it's a massive 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 thing one of the biggest things in our lifetimes when i saw that uh sal did come off the petrodollar i was like okay well i wonder what all the sort of what the financial times is going to say what all the sort of so-called, what the sort of allegedly highbrow uh, broadsheet newspapers are going to say, what you like financial um, uh, themed YouTubers are going to say, nothing, hardly anything about it from anyone. Um, and and that, that just screams absolute denial that, 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 that just like, you know, putting your fingers in your ears, la, 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 that didn't just happen. That did not just happen. Um, yeah. Either that, or a lot of the well, no, it must be that. I was going to try and give them some wiggle. I have it, another it, one. It simply must be that. Go ahead. What I think, uh, Mr. H, do you have any any thoughts on why they haven't said anything? Why the people haven't been informed? Well, I mean, I, I think there's, I think there's a, an air of ignorance about a lot of things in this day and age, for sure. It's definitely uh, a big one. Yeah, but I also think that there's a, a certain element of a, of a general conspiracy as well. You know the bigger ones for starters like you talk about a cabal wanting to you know ride a wave into as much profit as possible i mean that's it's just a conspiracy isn't it? it's a joint conspiracy it's, it's essentially you know backhand back room handshakes going yeah we probably won't talk about this for a while no no cool can you make did we make this much money yeah, that's good. yeah cool 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 because if one person starts talking about it everyone has to start talking about it so there must be an element of a conspiracy amongst all of the big uh sort of papers not to cover it from that perspective, anyway, yeah. and then a large portion of ignorance. No one's a journalist anymore. No one does actual. Oh, journalism. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and to be clear, uh, for anyone wondering, uh, well, how does this affect me? Oh, it's going to. Uh, this is going to affect anyone that uh, is uh, a regular recipient of a paycheck. So anyone that's working a nine to five, this is going to affect you. Maybe not mm. now, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but in six months, you're going to start feeling the effects. You're going to start <coughs> feeling this <coughs> right around the time when the new president comes into office, well, whoever that may be. I think that's part of it. First and foremost, most people who aren't educated or haven't done their own research to understand the petrodollar, they have no idea what it is and they have no idea the impact of what just happened. Which means there is no reason to write about this because at first you have to educate people on what the hell is the petrodollar and what does it mean to you that it's no longer a thing. That's the first mm. thing. That's difficult for journalists. The other is that most news media is corporate. The only ones mm. who are even starting to talk about it are the independent ones. But there you have the same problem. They don't understand the petrodollar because you either have to be an economist or you have to done your, your particular research. And this is the kind of thing you don't do your research on before you have to do your research on. Mm -hmm. And this happened only a few days ago. I, your Tucker Carlson's and stuff like that, they're not aware of this yet. They have to have time to find out, then do their research. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to be like, oh, shit. And that's when yeah. they are going to start doing it. The, the mainstream media, though, they're not going to touch it. And I think... Because here you have the perfect weapon to use against Trump 
in case they're not able to block him from taking back the White House. Because what this means right here, he now can't fix the U.S. economy. The mm. U.S. economy right now, as of this moment, is unfixable. All the stuff that Trump did before when he was in office from 2016 to 2020, that won't work anymore. Because all of that relied on the petrodollar. None of it is going, well, some of it, all of it is going to make things better, but it's not going to work. He is not able to do anything about the U.S. <clears throat> debt without the petrodollar, which means that he right now has a problem that he cannot fix. He cannot fix this problem internationally. Uh, the U.S. empire, as of this mo moment, is done. It's over. Mm. The only way this can be restored is if Trump is able to convince the Saudis to return to the petrodollar. Now, of course, that's a much bigger deal because one thing would just do to be renewing it, right? But now it's a matter of altering whatever they have got going with BRICS and return to the petrodollar instead. Yeah. If anyone can do that, it's Trump. But really, that's the only way to fix the U.S. economy. He now has a bigger deal, a much bigger issue to deal with with the petrodollar. And maybe that can't be done. And if that can't be done, the U.S. economy can't be fixed. That's not his fault. That's something that happened on Biden's watch. But the media, is good. they're not going to be honest about that. They're just going to say, things aren't getting better. Everything is getting worse now. Say, for instance, two or years in the future, say, Trump has been uh, in a president for two years and the economy hasn't gone better. On the contrary, everything has still gone to hell. U.S. has defaulted. Now you have to cut all of these social services, blah, 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 because you have no choice. And they're going to blame Trump for a situation that he didn't create and is kind of a powerless victim. In. And then his fan base are going to lose support because he did it before, but now he suddenly can't do it again. I think that's the bigger mm -hmm. game of no mainstream media saying anything about this because now yeah, they have something sure. to use against trump next time there's an election Play. which would be 2026 Play. because then yeah. you have the midterm election now you have the perfect weapon that he didn't yeah. fix the economy and it's the economy yeah. stupid and the economy is now broken and unfixable but if people don't know that and they don't know how it can be weaponized yeah play <clears throat> play ignorant to uh that's that's, that's just my people. speculation, but no, I would be surprised if there wasn't something to that. I agree with that, as well as uh, a combination of profiteering for sure, as well. Off of oh yeah, and to be clear, also, if yeah. if you know, I mean, the people who are in power right now, oh, they're going to be so filthy rich on this. If you oh, yeah. know, if you are already above a critical mass, there is so much money to be had. On the collapse of yeah. the US. You just have to know how. I mean, that's how Soros mm -hmm. made his fortune, uh, making mm. uh, countries and economies collapse and then betting against them. All you have to do is do that and you're sorted. You're going to triple your fortune, but you have to know and you have to be above the critical mass where you can do it. Mm. Most people yeah, can't do that. They'll need, be hackless victims. And you need a lump sum to begin with. Yeah. I think, I think it's probably, I think Andre's really probably quite right about a lot of, a lot of what he said there concerning the, um, the, the, the seeming silence. It's, it's lies by omission. That's what the corporate mainstream media does best. Uh, you know, that's what Tiggers do best. Lies by mm. omission. That's that's what they're most practicing, that they just don't tell you about a thing. It's, just, it's quite simple, really. I mean, where's Jim Cramer? Where's CNBC's Jim Cramer on all this? Oh, not Dickie Bird. Not a word. Interesting. That's very interesting. Because quite often it's the same people the same groups of people, the same families, the uh, the same billionaires that control that control all these sorts of things that control media and control uh, have stakes in the Federal Reserve and control all sorts of crap. A very very small number. You talk about the one percent. It's more like yeah, the if not, I may, not, not one percent. If I may, it would be the people, like we all talk about um, BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street. It would be the people that own BlackRock and Vanguard yeah, and yeah. State Street and the Federal Reserve. Yeah. 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 Um, we've got some super chats about this, actually. So thank you so much, guys, for uh, joining in the political political conversation. Uh, it means a lot. 
So chaos is fun. Super chat five dollars says, you know, uh, big man Papa Joe will pardon him. Talking about uh, Hunter, if he remembers, he has a son in between shitting his <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> Just on that real quick, uh, Sleepy Joe did say he wouldn't pardon Hunter, ah, but bollocks. yeah, but bollocks. bollocks, yeah. It loads and loads of presidents have said they won't pardon whoever, XYZ, and then on literally their last day in office, they pardon all their friends. He ain't remembering uh, what he had for breakfast. So, man. Right, Come yeah, on. you can even remember. So Joe has <laughs> gone on record saying he won't pardon Hunter, but I would put good money on that he just will. Because uh, that's what a lot of loads and loads of presidents uh, <laughs> do. That nearly they nearly all do. Marshmallow says, "Looked at Zimbabwe like hold my beer, bruv." <laughs> <laughs> Sun Creek Production says, "When a civilization collapses, corruption is usually to blame, uh, except in cases of natural disaster, volcanoes, asteroids, earthquakes, etc." Yeah, yeah, true, true. Corruption is a big part of it. Um, Marshmallow says it's all one big club and you ain't in it. George Carlin. Yeah. yeah. Can't argue in that. that big club, even. It's actually a pretty small club. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like Trump, Trump's not in it, right? Trump's not in that club. Yeah. Well, he got yeah. kicked out of it. He yeah. betrayed yeah. it. That's why they hate him, because he's a, he's a betrayer to his people, which was that club. Uh, Kalei Chioki, Super Chat $2, says, Why for years now have we been so reliant on oil? Why haven't we found a different source of energy? One prefer preferably found locally in the US. Why do we have to rely on Saudi Arabia? Would a siege on Saudi Arabia possibly turn things around? Um, well, you guys have got your own oil as well, though. But The United States and, Ca and Canada have got gigantic reserves of, you do. of crude you oil. Don't, you just don't collect them. Yeah, you know, like, the U.S. has Russian massive, Russia. massive oil reserves. The only one that doesn't have that is actually Europe. Europe doesn't have oil or gas reserves, apart from some areas. In the the moment you get to Ukraine, to Russia, then there's a ton. In Norway, there's a ton. But not mainland Europe. Ain't nothing there. But the U.S. has loads. There is just a matter of, uh, of will to, to dig it out of the ground. As yeah. for as for alternatives, there are alternatives. It's nuclear, and nuclear you can even make better by investing in thorium. Beyond that, you really don't have anything because there you are limited by what we have been able to figure out in physics and in chemistry. Mm. And that's as far as we have gone. It could be that there are other ways to create energy and do the same stuff that you can do with oil and gas right now. But if there, there are... Is we haven't been able to figure it out. Well, no, we, well, so we say, so, well, Bo, you should know this being a car guy. Um, Porsche has made a fully clean e-fuel, um, literally just out of, uh, I think it's just out of water, to be perfectly honest. They've, they've literally just got, off, and they, they run their high-powered sports cars on it. So we, we haven't funded it because all this clean energy stuff is a fucking grift. You know, yeah, you we, 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 we're we trying to push for electric cars when you can literally have an internal combustion engine fully renewable. Yeah, you can separate uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen and use the hydrogen do, yeah. as a fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's what, what they, they plan do, yeah. to do on, on, on the moon. So, yeah, you can you can definitely do that. One yeah. thing I'll say and is... They, they've got it nailed. Like, it fully works. They, they ha they, oh, yeah. They've been doing it for a while now. Um, so... Um, yeah, I, I know a little bit, a, a little bit really about oil, uh, the oil industry and all sorts of things, um, not just from sort of 20th century history, but I used to work for an, an oil commodities trading firm. Now, I wasn't a trader. I do have to say that straight off the bat. I was only really involved in middle office and back office stuff. Nonetheless, for a few years, I worked in and around oil trading. And someone in the chat, Michael, somebody said that um, the United States is a, an, an oil exporter. So just to build on that slightly, um, yeah, they both import and export oil and have always or for a long, long time. Um, it's whether you're sort of a net importer or a, or, or a net exporter. So under mm. Trump, under Trump, they became completely self-sufficient. They became a, a net exporter of oil. In other words, they've got enough of their own for their own domestic consumption. And we've got excess which can sell to the world. 
So even though right now today, America does still export millions of barrels of oil every single day, they're a net importer. Net. That's the key thing. So, but yeah. So, so Trump put them in. A I place can explain where, that. Where? Okay, just let me finish real quick. Trump put them in a place where they were a net exporter, and the Biden administration. Hopefully, Andre will give us more detail in a sec. The Biden administration have made political decisions mm. to 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 make to make that not the case anymore. Andre. It's kind of parallel to what is going on in the Norwegian electricity market. Because just to say what's going on in my country, which frustrates me no end. Uh, because we are powered by... Uh, I'm going somewhere with this. We are going somewhere... Uh, we are uh, powered primarily by hydropower, which is infinite, it is cheap, it is renewable, and because of that, Norwegian power prices have always been very, very low, which is very good in a very, very cold winter country. But we have all the power that we need. And then a few years ago, some politicians decided it would be really, really awesome if we could sell all of this super duper cheap power that we produce to Europe at a premium. And then we can buy the power that we suddenly no longer have because we sell ours out. Then we can buy more expensive power back again. And this is awesome because we, the ones making this deal, we that way, we get to sell our cheap power at the premium. But at the same time, we buy the power back again. But we're not paying the bill. It's no stupid pleb. It's the people who are paying for that in increasing power prices. Mm -hmm. So we make money in both ends, right? That's what happens in my country. And that's the exact same thing that is happening under the Biden administration. They take out slightly less oil to appease the squad, the squad and all of the other green graces in their own party. So they take out less oil out and gas out of the ground. But what they do have, they sell. And they sell it at a premium. But then they now you don't have enough for your own consumption. So now you have to buy. Now you have to buy from Iran. You have to buy from Saudi Arabia. This is more expensive. But that's perfectly okay. Because you, the government, you do not pay that price. That you'll push on to the people. That is why suddenly... Gas is so much more expensive. This is how Trump was able to predict to all you Americans watching how your fuel prices were going to go up so and so much per gallon because he knew exactly what was going to happen. Biden doesn't produce enough to do it uh, to, to make the, uh, the, uh, the the gas locally, which means that he has to import it. And the price for that is pushed straight on to you, the consumer. So the U.S., no, not the U.S. as a nation, but the private companies that sell the oil, they then earn money from selling it. So that's more beneficial to them. It's much, much better for them to sell that at a premium abroad than to sell it inside the mm. U.S. for fuel and stuff like that that you need. Uh, so they, they would much rather sell it abroad and then have the people buy their own oil or rather pay for the oil that has to be imported. That's how that works. So yeah. the thing to keep in mind here is that even if at, at this superficial glance, the nation is the one that is suddenly selling its own stuff and buying it more expensive back again, it's a matter of who gets to be left with the cash there and who is the one ultimately paying for it. And in all cases, it's the people that ends up paying for paying for it. But then you have corrupt officials that can enrich themselves in the process, and that's why you have these policies. I mean, that's what the entire green movement is all about. It's using gullible fools as foot soldiers, but meanwhile, you have the fat cats that enrich themselves in both ends, at the expense of the regular people who are the ones that suffer a worse infrastructure and worse services that they have to pay much, much more money for. And all of that money all ultimately goes to fund the fat cats. That's what's going on. <clears throat> well, yeah, an, um... an, an exercise in wealth transfer. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah.